think about what this is going to do to your vision on the baseball. If my move is, and as I take my forward move, my head drops like this far, what's the ball doing? Right. Really? Yeah. That would make a lot of sense. Like I always swing over the top of the ball that's like this high. Like I, I might get like get a change up. I'll be a little early. And like I just swing right over the top of well, the ball. Think about it, like ball's coming in, you're tracking it, and all of a sudden your eye level at the like the last ten feet of ball flight is gonna drop six to eight inches or more. Right? Like your ability to see the ball is gonna be really, really difficult. And then you also lose your ground connection, so now your path is gonna su suffer like being able to stay stacked all the way through that move when my head stays super stable, like you're going to see it better, and then your body's also going to be in a better position. And you, that's what you just did. Like you look at the video, your eyes, I mean, they stay on this line all the way through, and then boom, you unload, okay? Guide where your barrel goes. Shoulders. Absolutely. Where do you feel your shoulders going? Like the like. Right, okay. So if you watch, let's see where your depth of contact is. So you're, you're hitting it at a great contact point, but does it feel like you're early? You get off the end, right? Well, so was it because you were early or because you run out of barrel because you had bad direction? Or you had bad direction? Right, so shoulders went up and back. So you get out here. So put your fist where the end of that barrel is, okay? So now watch this difference. All right, if I fire from the same spot and I go up and back, I run out of barrel. Fire from the same spot, I stay down and turn forward. If anything, I'm almost late on that. Okay, does that make sense? So like, it's not the timing that's the issue, it's the direction that your shoulders are going. Just really focus on stay there, stay there, stay there, let that back shoulder work underneath and forward instead of up and away from it. I'm trying to create variability off of that if my timing is off, but that's where I want to get to. So you have a predetermined spot that you're trying to get to, and then the path will allow you to adjust for timing if you're a little bit early, a little bit late, and then subtle, like fine tune adjustments are gonna allow you to change for like in, out, up, down, just a little bit, but that's where I'm swinging. Like that's where I'm going to. That's the pitch I'm looking for. That's the pitch I'm hunting, and I'm moving to that pitch, and then I can adjust while I'm moving versus waiting to see if that pitch is gonna be there, and then I'm gonna go to that spot. I'm already going to that spot. Okay, does that, does that make more sense? And I think that's where in the game you get in that position where you're like, and you're trying to like see the pitch before you decide where you're going to move to. Okay? Like I know how and where and when I'm going to move and then I can adjust. But once I've already gotten started, if I haven't gotten started, like you're too, you're already late. And then the swing's going to break down and just make contact with it. Okay? Okay. But look, I can feel pressure in that heel and watch, I can load and work around the like the top up here. To stay in my heel doesn't mean I just like get stuck here and then I can't do anything. I can still have that rhythm, but I wanna work where I can feel it in the ground and then let my butt turn like towards the pitcher so it's to feel that load. Can you feel that? Let me see it. It's better, do it a little slower, a little bit more. Against it and then go. Hold on, don't move, don't move. There, okay, now, yep. That way, right there, there you go, right there. That's a whole lot stronger, how's that feel? All right, good. Where you just kind of watch, you, you're just like setting this back arm and then it's just pull, there's no rhythm and then turn, it's just like set it and then pull to the ball. Yeah, well, just, just have a little bit of rhythm. Don't think too much about it. Yes, that's kind of what we're looking for to where instead of this arm just pushing back, that back arm's getting more engaged and then we're firing. But I just want you to think about creating a little bit of rhythm, like gather, separate, instead of just push it back and then go, okay? What do you think prevents most young hitters, especially high school guys, from unloading their back hip, like really letting it fly? The way that I want you to. What do you, what do you think keeps you from doing that? Too late. Uh -uh. Uh, well, that's part of it. That, that's, that's not what I, what I think. This is more of a, a sequencing thing. What do you think happens? If your hands are in front of your hip, okay, so you let your hands rush because you're late, 
Alright? And then you blow your back hip out. Where are your hands going? They're going straight that way if you're lefty, straight that way if you're right. If they get in front and you blow this out, everything's going to go because you have no resistance. Okay? But if I make sure that I get to the ground earlier and hold my stretch, now this is going to ball out. It has time to get going, and now I can hold my direction. If my hands get back early and come with me, and I'm a little rushed, and I try to fire hard, that's what you just felt. Because we're here, you blow the hip out, and whoop, that pass went that way. So what happens is you guard your legs. What do I mean by guarding? You don't allow them to blow out because you don't get enough stretch to resist it. Okay? So let's focus. I mean, this is as a group. Stretch against it and blow this thing out. If you pull off when you blow your hip out, what does that tell you? Your hand is flat. Right. Okay? But if you never feel that hip attack the way that it should, if you never go, all right, I'm going with my legs, you're never going to feel the fact that you're not creating any stretch. You've got to let it fly. If you swing this, cap one, who cares? But you've got to hold that stretch and try to feel it. Okay? You don't remember what we talked about? You had the best day of your ever life in here. Had a long day. Yeah, but that was a week ago. I do remember. I did remember it, like coming in. No pressure. The only reason I say that is like when you lock into something like that, that's that, like that good. Like you got to write it down. You got to write it down. Because you're not going to remember it. Like, you'll be like, man, what was I thinking about that day? You got to write down. That's why we got the books. Right? Got to make sure that every time, like, whether it's cage, game, whatever, you, you take that time, both good and bad, like, hey, I felt like crap today. I had no thought process. And remind you, and then when you have a good day, you got to go, so you can go back to it. Like, that's the biggest thing. That's how you build a consistency is from a mindset standpoint of, all right. I just hit a ball 400 feet for the first time at 96. What was I thinking? Oh, I was thinking this. <laughs> write it down. I did these drills today. Write those down. This is what my video look like. Did, write that down. And then six months from now, all right, you're like, man, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit. Like, what was I thinking about back during the off season? Boom. There it is. Okay. That's the only way you're going to build on what we're doing and then stay consistent with it. And then when it's not always going to be there, it's not always going to be there. When it's gone, right? and gone doesn't mean your swing mechanics all of a sudden go to crap. Gone means it something feels off, and you don't know what it is. That's when you need something you can refer to. Okay, so that's maturing as a hitter. It's just like maturing in class. Like the class that's easy, snooze through it, don't take notes, make an A. Okay, you take that 400 level calculus class. It's like you know what I might want to pay attention. Well, that's the difference between facing 78 with no off speed and 94 in college with run and command and plus off speed stuff. That's if you're in that 400 level now. You gotta be more detail oriented. Okay, does that make sense? All right, let's go. Two things that guys that throw harder at the youth level and the high school level don't do well. What are those two things? They can't locate, okay? They just throw it hard and flat, okay? And they don't have good off speed stuff, okay? Did you face Logan Wood this year? Okay. He's 87. Nasty, right? All right? He doesn't throw that hard, but it moves and he changes speed. So all of the faster pitching guys that you guys are facing, you're like, yeah, I like hitting off that guy. He's not faster, all right? All he does is throw it a little bit harder and flat, all right, with no off speed. If the guy had good curveballs and throws harder than the slow pitching, guess what he's going to do? He's going to strike you out if you're a I like faster pitching guy, okay? The key is, is like, you guys say, I like faster pitching. Well, that's what? For you, what, 84, 85? Okay, what about 94? You're not going to like that, okay? What's faster pitching for you, 60? So what happens if kids throw 73? Oh, no, I don't like that. So we can't have it where the pitcher throws the ball on time with us, okay? That's what happens when you say, I like a certain speed of pitching. It means he's matching your timing. So that means you got to hope that that guy out there throws his fastball at whatever speed you like instead of, I don't care how hard he's throwing, I'm raking today. If he's a good pitcher with good stuff, it's a battle. If he's throwing 70 poo right down the middle, we should go four for four.
Okay? Go 4 4. Not necessarily in hits, but we're going to barrel the ball four times. Do you know why I hit 450 in college? Because we faced guys that sucked during the week. So I would go four for four, five for five with two homers. And then we faced the guy throwing 93 in a conference weekend. I'm going one for three, two for four, having a battle. All right? That's, that's the trade off. You make your money off the guys that suck. All right? That's the guys that suck in the big leagues. All right? Are the fifth starter that throws 92 with mediocre stuff. There's not a lot of guys left in the big leagues like that, but you're not going to go four for four on Justin Verlander. Okay? Does that make sense, guys? If you think that way, then we need to make a change instead of hoping the pitcher is the guy that we can hit good off of. Okay? Make sense? 